Well, this is a, a Seamaster Sailor 23. Uh, she, is, she is 23 foot, although they measured it here at 24 foot. However, uh, she's eight, uh, eight foot beam and she has a, a center plate, uh, which is three foot six with the plate up and now about six foot uh, with the plate down. I actually replaced this plate about 10 years ago when I had her out of the water I found there was a great big chunk that had broken off the middle of part of it and I took the opportunity to make a template while it was out and being repaired and I eventually had another plate cut much thicker and I added a few more inches because I guess that so much of it had been knocked off using it as an echo sounder coming out of, out of the River Cohen at Brighton so places like that uh, the draft is six foot with that done built in 1972 and I've had her since 1981 she's done me good service I recently put a new engine in the engine blew up the year before last I just sailed back from Harwich got back to Bradwell dropped the sails outside the power station started the engine and as soon as I put it in gear bang the old Volvo gave up the ghost smoke oil everything. and so quick thinking I hoisted my 20 quid mainsail and sailed into up the creek into the Bradwell Marina with the intention initially of tying up alongside the visitors pontoon however there was a busy Sunday afternoon and boats were coming and going out of the marina nobody offered me a tow and when I got to the visitors pontoon there was a uh, already rafting up three abreast on there no room for me there but I was lucky enough to have a wind change to my favor so I carried on sailing in the marina and my berth is right on the far side of the marina from the entrance and I actually sailed right into my berth and tied up as normal when I tied up um, there was a guy walking past and then there was a round of applause from the clubhouse nearby. Everybody was standing on the veranda. I said to this chap, what's all the excitement? Is Ella MacArthur in here or something? No, he said, it's you, you silly devil. Me? Yes, he said, you just sailed into your berth. I said, oh, doesn't everybody do that? <laughs> so I turned, to the, uh, I turned to the audience and took a bow. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to have five berths in this boat but as you probably gather there's hardly enough room to swing a cat so, <laughs> so there's actually two berths in, in the fore cabin there's a double here in the saloon and where the fifth berth is I keep my refrigerator at. and Misty's little bunk that's Misty's bunk she's been a crewmate as long as she's been alive and she's 14 so uh, she was trained, she was trained on this boat and she, actually she was my wife's cat, Isabel. And the last thing she said she felt before she passed away in 2006 was look after Misty for me. Uh, but it's the truth of the matter is she looks after me. So what is it that's really unique about this boat that, that makes it that you, you don't, you don't want to change and you're happy with her? Well, I guess it's it, it's just the right size to handle it single-handed. I stay on most of the time on my own, and um, it, it's an absolute doddle. She performs exactly and does exactly what you want it to do. She goes points where you want to. She's not the fastest boat on the water, but she certainly looks after me. Got reasonably um, good ballast, and her centre plate enables me to go up creeks and places that I perhaps wouldn't have been able to go. Does sail much better than perhaps than her bilge keeler. Now she can point closer to the wind, and also she really does plough through the waves. You don't get that slop that you'd get with a twin keel, with the waves going between the keels. She just rides through them. And are there many of this class around? 
there were quite a lot made. I mean, this one's 247. They built all over different places. They were based, um, Seamaster were actually based at Great Dunmo. But I think just discovered Lloyd's Register of Shipping that she was actually built in Lancashire and I've only just learned that. <laughs> built by Duprin. This is a 23. Did, did they make anything larger or smaller? They made two others that I'm aware of. They made a 26 foot and they made um, a 29 foot uh, and then of course they ceased to business uh, Seamaster. They didn't go into liquidation, they just decided to stop building boats. Well, what's special about Bradwell? Well Bradwell used to be um, when I first came here, we used to actually sit in the mud at low water because the, the owners, the original owners when I came here, was uh, Tom Jones and Engelbert Humperdinck. They owned this marina. What I like about Bradwell Marina is the fact that it, it's location. I can be within 10 or 15 minutes of leaving my berth. I'm out in the river. I can either turn left and stay in the river. It's about a two mile wide river. Stay in the river, go up to Malden or not stay up that way, or immediately go out to sea. Turn right and you're off. So Which of course leads us on to another thing. That I mean, you've had Big Jagger in here, haven't you? And you've had the Beatles in this boat. In my pictures. Yeah. Yes. So tell us about that. <laughs> Yes, I, in a previous life I did, I worked with all the pop stars, uh, Beatles, Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger, Cliff Richard, Mark Bolan, David Bowie, Royal, I could go through the whole list, and Lulu. I actually found Lulu uh, in a working man's club, and she was uh, uh, Lulu and the Lovers, I was actually about 15 years old then. Lulu was on there, on the, as a supporting act. And she's singing songs, that, that ballads and so on, that other people have made hits. And then she finished off her repertoire by telling the audience that she had they'd been practicing this little song, never sung it in public before, hope you're going to like it, it's called Shout. And my goodness, when she went into Shout, I thought, she's got a hit record there. This kid has got a star. Nobody had ever heard of her before. So when she came off stage, I, um, I tackled her with her manager, Marion, and we sat down there uh, and had a coffee, and I, I needed to find out when she was going to release Shout. Oh no, she said, we're not, we're not recording Shout. We're going to the recording studios on Monday, but we're going to record a ballad. I said, why? Well, it's ballads, they're all in the top ten now, all ballads. I said, well, that's a very good reason why you should be recording Shout. It will shake up the, mon you know, the, the, the trend that's apparent now. It's something different. It will wake people up. You've really got to record Shout because that's got to be your hit record, believe me. It's the only reason I'm photographing you now is because of that record, uh, that uh, song that you just sang. And of course, by the time they got to the recording studios, they realised that Shout should be recorded, and that was the, her first release, verse number one. I'm not saying Lulu would not have been a big star had it not been for me suggesting that she records that record. But I think I was the rocket booster that got her into orbit. <laughs> if you're watching this, Lulu, I'd love to meet you and photograph you again. <laughs>